Welcome to CISM Perspectives. I'm Dr. George Everly. Welcome to our latest installment, CISM, Pandemics, and Civil Unrest. So here's the question. Can CISM be employed to respond to the mental health consequences of pandemics and civil unrest? It's certainly a topical question. Well, one of the things that we know is that psychological responses to disasters always follow phases, predictable phases. They occur in a predictable trajectory. There are a lot of ways of categorizing those phases. The most simplistic would be before a disaster, during a disaster, and after a disaster. My favorite heuristic, however, it was developed by Diane Myers and Leonard Zunin, and it follows the phases of disaster as formulated as early as 1990. The warning phase, the impact phase, the heroic phase, the disillusionment phase, which is where most of the CISM services will be provided, the rebuilding, and finally the recovery. And you'll see that this is plotted against a trajectory of time. So from the phenomenological point of view, or what you're likely to see, again, psychological responses to disasters always occur in phases. In this case, we'll be a little bit more granular. So what are the direct mental health consequences of pandemic or civil unrest? While these are very different events, very different agents, I will argue that they follow a predictable pattern. So we are likely to see grief, anger, fear, anxiety, especially in the disillusionment phases. Those are the direct impacts. But even more relevant to current events, the indirect impacts, especially on the economy. Well, there will be a psychological consequence to these indirect economic impacts as well. And we'll think of them in the context of disillusionment, anger, certainly, perhaps desperation, depression, and maybe even for those who are laid off or even fired from their jobs, a sense of betrayal. So if those are indeed the phases that we see over and over again, and they are predictable, it would seem to me that it's almost a continuum of phases. Enter CISM. So phasic incidents such as pandemics, such as civil unrest, always require a continuum of intervention, a continuum of care. CISM is a multifaceted continuum of care. It's the most widely used in the world. It is the most comprehensive of which we know. So if an incident, if an agent unfolds in a phasic manner, it would seem only logical that the best intervention should also be phasic, that the intervention should be matched to the phases as they unfold. Is it possible, for example, to do the right intervention at the wrong time? Of course. Is it ever too late for a certain intervention? Of course. Could you be too early? Of course. So, CISM is the most widely used continuum of care. And the notion of a continuum of care is not new. While it was built into the CISM formulation, it was recommended by the British Psychological Society and other authors as early as 1990. So given that CISM represents a continuum of interventions, a logical question would be, what are the most common CISM interventions used? Well, we can choose psychological first aid, which is done one-on-one, -on -one, either face-to-face, -face, telephonically, by email, or virtually. We could choose to use small group crisis interventions, the small group crisis management briefing, for example, or the small group critical incident stress debriefing. We could choose to use large group crisis interventions, the large group crisis management briefing. Think of that as a is a town hall meeting of sorts, spiritual care, wellness practices, and certainly triage and referral to counseling or even psychiatric care. They all fit on a continuum of care. And that's what 
the essence of critical incident stress management is. And we can certainly use these interventions in an overlapping way, meaning we can be using simultaneously psychological first aid while we're also using large group crisis interventions and the like. So we began by asking the question, can CISM be employed to respond to the mental health consequences of pandemics and civil unrest? The answer without question is yes. But it's not only yes, it is that given the phasic nature of a disaster, the most appropriate intervention should be a phase specific intervention formulation. That is the essence of critical incident stress management. I'm Dr. George Everly. Thank you for tuning in.